Well, good morning again. It's me again, I'm sorry. It's the summer, so um, I'm not only leading worship, I'm also speaking. So forgive me if it's all me this morning, um, but it's, it's fine. Good, great to see you. We're going to be looking again at continuing our series in Luke, exploring who Jesus is. So if you've got a Bible, can you turn to Luke chapter 5? There are some Bibles on the side if you want to use them. It won't be coming up behind me because, as you know, our projector is broken. And I'm sorry I didn't call out the name at the first number of the, uh, in the worship. I, it came to mind as we were going along. Um, so if you've got a Bible, you might want to turn to Luke chapter 5. What are we learning today? What's our lesson? What are we learning from? What we're going to see? We're going to learn that Jesus is like a doctor, and he calls himself, he he calls himself, I am a, I am a doctor. He's like a doctor who saves and helps anyone who will come to him. So will we come to him, and will we help others to come to him? Jesus is like a doctor who saves and helps anyone who will come to him. So will we come to him and help others to come to him, this good doctor? I'm going to break down this passage into three sections rather than read the whole thing through. I don't know what you, your experience of going to the doctors is like. Hands up if you like going to the doctor. Oh, a couple of you like it. I will talk to you afterwards as to why. Do they give you free chocolate or something? Yeah. They give, you, give, you, give you freebies or something? I don't know what. I mean, I, I, I kind of, I put off going to the doctor. I'm probably like most men that put off going to the doctor until, like, it gets really bad. Are you, some of you like that? Do you put off going to the doctor? Raise your hand if that's you. Oh, yeah. There's women as well. I appreciate that. But men tend to be a bit stubborn, a bit prideful, don't want to go and see a doctor they kind of do, but they don't. It's, we're just scared, basically, aren't we? We wouldn't admit it. We're a bit scared, a bit nervous about going to the doctor. I remember once I got, I, I, well, I regularly, if you go up to Wimbledon Common, which is a wonderful place to go, I often get bitten on my legs by um, whatever they are, whatever horrible little creatures live in the grass on Wimbledon Common. And um, I remember once it's, my legs swelled up, swelled up, swelled up, and t- until in the end, so I could hardly fit in my trousers. And only then would I go to the doctor and they gave me some antibiotics. So I, you often go to the doctor when it's like, you need to, you have to. And I've done that on lots of occasions. But can I also say, and I need to learn from that. I, I do need to learn from that. And all of us, please, let's learn from that. Because doctors are important. They are God's gift to us. So we should all, and what I'm saying, what I follow up with is, is what I also like, am, which is a bit of a hypocrite, maybe I'm a bit of a hypocrite, in that if I hear that somebody else is a bit ill, I say, I do obviously want to pray for them, and we're going to talk to that about that today. But I do say to them, have you seen your doctor about this? And I'm quite keen that they go to the doctor, but I'm not so keen. I sort of say it to myself, and I do know it, but I don't do it. And you probably don't listen to me either, so I'm encouraging you again. Go to the doctor if you are ill. So it's like this idea Doctors, a doctor, a good doctor, we should go to our doctor. And we should encourage others to go to their doctor as well if we hear they're ill. But I'm going to bring this into the idea of Jesus Christ who calls himself a good doctor and how we can come to him and don't put off coming to him and he can help us. He can heal us. He can save and forgive and do everything. A miracle, miraculous things in our lives if we come to him and help others to come to him. So let's look at the first episode in our reading today from um, Luke chapter 5, 12 to 16. While Jesus was in one of the towns, a man came along who was covered with leprosy. When he saw Jesus, he fell with his face to the ground And begged him, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Lord, if you are willing, 
you can make me clean. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said. Be clean. Immediately, the leprosy left him or the skin disease. We don't really know what the issue was. The, the word is a skin disease of some kind, which has been translated as leprosy here. Then Jesus ordered him, don't tell anyone. And the reason why he's saying don't tell anyone is because he doesn't want to become this celebrity messiah and for people to force him into some position of authority at this time. So keep it quiet. Don't tell anyone, but go show yourself to the priest. Offer the sacrifices Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. Yet news. See, this man couldn't contain it, could he? Yet news spread all the more so that crowds of people came to hear him and be healed of their illnesses. But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. There's so much in even this first section of three. I'm going to try and get through it all. He was, this man was humble enough to come to Jesus for healing. And just look at his humble, passionate prayer. He fell with his face to the ground and begged him. This is similar to what we see of Peter in the last chapter, if you remember. Peter fell at Jesus' feet or his knees and and said, I'm a sinful man. We're seeing this humility, this passionate prayer. Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. If you are willing, Jesus, can you please heal me? Where things seem impossible, Jesus can do the impossible. This is, we can learn this from this. Jesus can do the impossible. Will we pray humbly, passionately, come to him in prayer and seek him? If you are willing. Now, this is not what sometimes called the prayer of faith. I can't go into as much detail as maybe some of you would like about healing and the processes of healing and so on today, because that would take a whole book. But what I can say very simply is that if you are willing is good enough. Do you get that? If you are willing, you can, Lord, if you are willing, is good enough. Some of us, me me most of the time, I come to Jesus and I say, Lord, please would you heal? Please would you provide? Please would you do miraculous things? You are able. I know you are able. That's why I'm praying. You see, prayer is a step of faith, isn't it? Do you, do I know you, how do I know you have faith? Because you pray. You wouldn't pray if you didn't have faith. So people say, you know, oh, yeah, you need faith for healing. Yes, if you pray, you have faith. But it may just be that if you are willing faith, you're not sure that God will definitely provide this thing or this healing. You're not sure. You don't know in yourself. You're honest. Be honest with yourself. What is the level of your faith? Because God knows your faith. God knows where you're at. God is a, and this is so important, and one of the songs maybe we'll sing later, is that God is a good father who gives us good gifts. And sometimes we treat God like he's some kind of, I don't know, maths teacher where you've got to get the formula right and then he might give you a tick. That's not God. God is like a good, good father who loves us. And when we come in prayer, he's ready to hear. He's ready to hear you. Even if it is, I know you can. Now you must, sorry, I'm not going to pull my punch on this one. You must know he can. God is powerful. God is almighty. There's no limit to God's power. I want to raise your faith. God is able to do anything. But sometimes we have the faith of, if you are willing. 
And I just want to release us, guys, because what I want to encourage you to do is not to, I don't want to bind you up in, in, in weirdness, to be honest, that makes you not pray for the sick. I want to release you to pray for the sick, knowing he can, with the level of faith you have. Come to Jesus, fall at his feet, pray to him, and keep praying to him. Let's be a church that does that. And we will grow in experience, grow in maturity, and grow and develop. But let's not get tied up by, by some weird teachers who tie us all up in knots and weirdness. Okay? This is, we're seeing Jesus here, and let Jesus release you to pray, to come to him. He is humble enough to come to Jesus for healing. And one of the devotionals this week, as you know, I always, like I did today, there's a lesson. It's always, I, I try and make sure, what is the thing I'm trying to say today? Or any, and and the, one of the devotions this week is this. Come to Jesus with expectation that he is willing to heal. However, if he doesn't, learn to worship in the waiting. And you're going to have to learn that lesson, guys. You're going to have to learn to worship in the waiting sometimes. Are you not? Of course you are. Unless you want to live in cloud cuckoo land. And you want to get discouraged. And you want to just live, you know, defeated. God doesn't want you living like that. Come to Jesus with expectation. He's willing to heal. Always come with that expectation. I'm coming with expectation, Lord. I'm coming to pray. I'm coming believing you're going to answer. I don't come believing he's not going to answer. I come believing he will answer. However, if he doesn't, it's a bit like, well, I'll go on to talk about this a bit later in the, a bit more application. And the, we're seeing the sign and wonder. I want to point to you just three things again, briefly, about this miracle here. And um, all miracles of Jesus. In, in the, the first, when we see a, a miracle of Jesus, you, 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 you can go two ways. What's your knee-jerk reaction? What's your immediate reaction? So when you see Jesus, when you see this miracle today, is your knee-jerk reaction to say, okay, uh, how do I need to be like Jesus or like this person? Or is your first knee-jerk reaction is what it should be, which is, Jesus, you are the Messiah. Jesus, I worship you. You are the Son of God. These signs are given to us to teach us to pray for the sick. But that's not the first reason. The first reason they're given is to teach us who Jesus is, that he is the Messiah, the Son of God. And by believing, you may have life in his name. That's the first reason why they're given. So they're a sign. And we read that in John 20. I've just quoted it. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe, these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and by believing, you may have life in his name. Faith in Christ saves you. Your sins are forgiven through faith in Christ. And these signs authenticate who Jesus is. This account by Luke that's being written to Theophilus, if you remember in chapter 1, as evidence for who Jesus is, speaks to us today that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and we worship you, Jesus. And yes, it's also going to teach us to pray for the sick. But don't put that first. Secondly, it teaches us about forgiveness. This, this idea of cleansing, this, this, this outward display of cleansing, as we're going to see the outward display of the healing of the paralyzed man, It's not saying these people are more sinful or something. It's just that Luke is choosing to use this miracle as an object lesson that as this skin disease is removed, it's a a demonstration of a deeper reality, which is your sins are being removed like this. So every one of us in this room have that skin disease. We are sinners, and we need Jesus to forgive us, and he has the power to forgive us. And that's one of the other first lessons we learn from this miracle. Not how I pray for the sick, but he cleanses me from my sin. He forgives me and saves me. And finally, it does teach us to pray for the sick, even if your faith is not as perfect 
as you would like. So the leprous man came to Jesus like a doctor and he helped him. Secondly, the friend of the paralyzed man and the man himself came to Jesus and was helped by Jesus. Let's look at Luke 5, Matthew, uh, Luke 5 17 to 26. One day, Jesus was teaching. The Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting there. They had come from every village of Galilee to and from Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was with Jesus to heal those who were ill. That is a really interesting phrase, isn't it? I'm not going to go into detail on it, okay? But what we do know is it's the presence of the Holy Spirit and his power that heals. So the power of the Lord was with Jesus to heal those who were ill. Some men came carrying a paralyzed man on a mat, tried to take him into the house and lay him before Jesus. They could not find a way to do this because the crowd, because of the crowd, they went on the roof and lowered him on his mat through the tiles into the middle of the crowd, right in front of Jesus. When Jesus saw their faith, what a phrase. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, friends, you're, it's interesting the first idea though, right? Your sins are forgiven. Just again, this is another object lesson, not just about healing, but how the healing of this, par of this um, issue, as with the skin disease, points to a deeper issue, which is sins forgiven. We're all paralyzed in that sense, and we all need forgiveness and the power of the Holy Spirit to enter into us. We haven't got the power to save ourselves, like this man didn't have the power to come through the roof on his own. None of us have the power to climb up to heaven by our good works and save ourselves. Jesus came down. He saved us by dying on the cross for us. That's the first lesson. Your sins are forgiven. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law began thinking to themselves, who is this fellow who speaks of blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? And they were right in saying that. Yes, sin is an offense against God. Jesus, as God the Son, is forgiving them. He is the right to do it, but they obviously think it's blasphemy. Um, Jesus knew what they were thinking and asked, why are you thinking these things in your heart? Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven, or to, or to say, get up and walk. But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. Again, that idea, forgiveness of sins. So, he said to the paralyzed man, I tell you, get up, take up your mat, go home. Immediately, he stood up in front of them, took what he had been lying on, and went home praising God. Everyone was amazed and gave praise to God. They were filled with awe and said, we have seen remarkable things today. This group brought their this friend who is in deep need to Jesus, like a doctor. Jesus is a doctor. If we will come to him, he will help us, save us. So will we come to him and will we bring others to him like they're doing here, they're bringing. And it says here faith. So we first see this idea of faith. Faith will be seen. Faith will be seen. If you have faith in God, it will be seen in your life in some way. There's no, there's no such thing as a private faith. If you are in any place of work, in any place you are, if you have faith, it will be seen. Because you're, you're, you're like these people, you've been forgiven. The power of God has entered you. You've been transformed. You've been given hope. How can you keep quiet about these things? Faith will be seen. And James 2.18 says, says, I will show you my faith by what I do. This is such a striking uh, account that teaches us so much. It teaches us what faith looks like. Their faith their faith in God led them to bringing their friend to Jesus. Our faith in God 
will cause us to bring our friends to Jesus. Whether it's Christian friends, whether it's those outside of faith. If, 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 we, if we have faith in God and we know him and he's done so much in our lives, we will want to bring and do all we can to bring our friends to Jesus. That can be in prayer. That can be in many ways, can't it? We will do all we can to bring them to Jesus. Jesus saw their faith. He said, son, your sins are forgiven. That's how you are forgiven. If you have put your faith in Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Why are they forgiven? Remember what the word forgive means. To give forward. Forward give. And where are you forward giving them to? When you, when you come to Jesus, where are you forward giving your sins? I'm making any sense. Where? Jesus. That's right, Jesus. You are forgiven because you've forward given your sins to Jesus on the cross. It's gone on him. He died for you. Not your good works. You don't save yourself. This latest man here, we had no strength to save ourselves, to come to Jesus ourselves. He saved us. By our faith, son, your sins are forgiven. Daughter, your sons are forgiven if you put your faith in Jesus. But we also see this idea here. So faith will be seen. If we have faith, we will do all we can to come to Jesus, to bring others to Jesus like this. But we see here that faith is challenged. You would have thought, wouldn't you? Jesus, you know, the, the man who is about to say to the guy, Pick up your mat and walk. You would have thought, wouldn't you, the man who at this point could read their minds because the Holy Spirit has given him insight, you would have thought that Jesus might have said, oh, there's some guys outside. Sorry, guys, stand aside. I've got to go outside because there are some people with faith and they can't get in. I'm going to go outside. And I mean, Isn't it interesting, isn't it, that they have to climb up on the roof and go through the roof? Do you ever think, what, why? I mean, it's a great picture, isn't it? Great for children's work, telling stories and all the rest of it. Isn't it wonderful? But imagine if it was you, right? I'm trying to do a good thing. I'm trying to bring my friends to Jesus. Jesus can do great miracles, yet I can't get in. Do you not think there's potential there for some bitterness and anger? When you want to do God's will and you want to do good, maybe you want to pray for the sick and it's being hindered? Maybe you're, you've got a sick friend and you're trying to bring them to Jesus and you're praying for them and it doesn't happen yet. Do you not think we're tempted to get angry? Now Jesus does, does this to teach us that faith will be tested. There will be obstacle, obstacles when you pray for the sick and there will be obstacles when you seek to bring your friends to faith. Will we per, Faith perseveres. We keep praying, we keep praying, we keep seeking, we keep trying to bring people to Christ, whether that's in healing or whether that's in salvation. Finally, Levi the tax collector, I'm rushing on. Levi or Matthew the tax collector, was hum- he came to Jesus the doctor. After Jesus, so this is Luke 5, 27 to 32. After this, Jesus went out and saw a tax collector by the name of Levi, sitting at his tax booth. Follow me, Jesus said to him. Levi got up, left everything, and followed him. Then Levi held a great banquet for Jesus at his house. And a large crowd of tax collectors and others were eating with them. But the Pharisees... And the teachers of the law, who belonged to their sect, complained to his disciples. Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus answered them, it's not the healthy who need a doctor, but those who are ill. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So you may say, look at this and say, um, this has got nothing to do with healing, has it? What, there's no healing here. I want us to see that healing 
is a very broad subject. When we say healing, what do we mean by that? We mean wholeness. We mean created as you were originally created. So when mankind was originally created, there was perfect obedience to God. There was perfect love for one another. There was perfect physical health and perfect relationship with nature, creation, and with God. That's the wholeness we're talking about here. It's not just like you know, healing of my knee or something. You know, that these, these, are, these are healing, but God has a big plan. And his big plan is that in the end, if you've put your faith in Christ, you will have all of that holistic healing in the eternal age. And that may be something new to you, but that is the hope we have as Christians. Not just to go to heaven as some sort of ghost. No, to be reunited with your body in a new heavens and a new earth. And these are pictures of these things that we're seeing here. We're seeing a taste of that kingdom in the leprosy being healed, in the paralyzed being healed. But also here, you see, Levi was also unwell. How was he unwell? He was greedy, self-centered, stealing, serving a foreign power that was corrupt. He had, his, mor- his moral standing was, was terrible. People hated him. That's why people despised tax collectors and called them sinners. Because they were greedy. They, they didn't just take tax. They took beyond that, took bribes, favored people who were wealthy for their own benefits. So Levi is also healed, not of a skin disease, not with new strength in his body, but with a new strength in his soul. Live for Jesus with honesty, with service to the world. And that's healing as well, isn't it? And that's the healing that maybe you'll experience more of today. Maybe you'll also experience some more of the healing in your body. Maybe you'll experience some more of the connection with God in a new way. God will, God, Jesus is a good doctor. Whenever you come to him, he does good things in us. Even if it's not always exactly right now what we want and we have to climb through the roof. But he was healed of this self-centeredness followed Jesus. He left everything and followed Jesus. We all need to hear this again, don't we? Part of your healing again. How does Jesus want to heal not only your body, but your, your, your life, your sanctification, your holiness, your, how you live each day and in your relationships? How does God, Jesus, want to heal you and call you to follow him in a new way. And let's remember that this is, you know, unlike the fishermen that we saw were called to follow Jesus, left their nets and followed him, but we know later on they go back to their fishing, and they can go back to their fishing. Unlike them, Matthew, Levi, is giving up his livelihood. There's no way he can go back to being a tax collector after deserting his post. He is giving up so much here. And Jesus is not saying to every one of us, leave your way of living, but he's definitely saying to you, leave your way of living that is dishonest, not honoring to God, that is sinful, that's not serving the world. He's definitely telling you to leave that manner of working. And he may well cause you, if you look at your work and you say, I can see no good in this work, he may well be calling you to leave that work. Because all the work we should do, and there's a lot of, you know, shades of grey within our work that, you know, but it should not be immoral and for the pulling down of people around us. But anyway, Zacchaeus is healed. He follows Jesus. How do you need to follow Jesus today? Jesus is like a good doctor. He saves and helps those who come to him. Will you come to him in all the ways you can? You come to him this morning at church. I'm speaking to the converted, I hope, for many of you anyway. You come to Jesus in your youth group when you meet with them. You're going to worship together. You're going to meet as you've got a new day. Hey. 
You're going to meet Jesus, right? Not just other young people. You're going to meet Jesus there. He's going to transform you. And he may say, come follow me in a completely direct, different direction you were expecting. He may heal you at New Day. He may heal you this morning. Wouldn't it be great to get prayed for if you've got any sickness today? Maybe you've never given your life to Jesus before. You see these miracles. You say, yes, I want to follow Jesus. I'm going to trust in him today. Are we humble enough to come to Jesus for forgiveness? Have you come to Jesus for forgiveness? All of these miracles, all of this, underlying this, point to forgiveness and cleansing from sin, which you all, we all need. Have we come to Jesus? Or are we like the Pharisees and the teachers here who belong to their sect, who complained, why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Oh, you're so much better. No, you're not. We're no better. None of us are any better than anybody else. Some of us may wear our sins on our outward appearance. Some of us may look, you know, the way we live and so on. Some of us may look more respectable. In it all, if you look under the surface, under the bonnet, we're all, all of us have got sin in us, haven't we? And we all need to come to Jesus for the first time to be cleansed and forgiven. And we need to come every day. So let me encourage you, friends, come to Jesus every day. And as it says in the Lord's Prayer, forgive us our debts as we also forgiven our debtors. Come to the doctor every day and get forgiven. Many of our problems psychologically are because we don't live a life where we are forgiving others and receiving forgiveness. By the power of the Holy Spirit in his presence. Will you believe that? Will you come to Jesus for healing? For forgiveness? Having that weight lifted from your soul? Come to him, friends. Are we humble enough to come to Jesus? For the healing and the needs of others. You know, so, the, so, so maybe you've got a friend who's sick. Maybe you've got a friend who needs a job. Maybe you've got a friend who needs to become a Christian. How can we, how can you bring them to Jesus? And we do that through prayer. We do that by serving them, investing in them, inviting them. How can we help to bring our friends to Jesus? Finally, are we humble enough? I've said this actually. Are we humble enough to bring our friends to Jesus? More like, I'm talking about people who are outside of faith. It's really interesting, and I hadn't noticed this before. You've got, two in, you've got the man who was healed of his skin disease, was told not to tell people about Jesus, yet news about him spread. You also have Levi. What did he do the, the moment he became a Christian? Shout it out. What did he do? He had a banquet. Isn't that interesting? Who did he invite to the banquet? Other people like him, his non-believing friends. It's really interesting. Just in the prior chapter, Jesus said that you will fish for people, didn't he? And we talked about that. And now we're seeing. what If Jesus has moved in your life in any way, healing, forgiveness, and so on, there's going to be an overflow where you're going to do all you can to bring your friends to Jesus. Not only for healing, but for salvation. How can you serve, invest, and invite in your school, in your college? I was really inspired, actually. I was um, with my uh, mother-in-law yesterday. Was it yesterday? It was yesterday, wasn't it? And the day before. And um, they, they, they lead, they have a, she's in a small church in a small village in Kent. They have 119 young people coming to their football club during the summer holidays. That's only for a week. Every day, and, and, and let me tell you this, nearly all of them are not from church. They're because the church have invited people to come. I'm just inspired by that. Are you inspired? Do you get inspired? Do you think, wow. I mean, and don't, you can't let yourself off the hook. It's not like these people are just, there's something so, they're just Faithful, praying Christians who want to bring their friends to Christ, and in this case, young people. 
119 young people who will hear the gospel every single day for a week and experience something of the kingdom of God. This is what we're seeing here. Throw a banquet. Now, this guy was middle class and wealthy. Whatever you are, wherever you are, whatever resources you've got, you've got some people to reach. School, college, university, wherever you are, your neighborhood, your own children, bring them to Jesus. Are we? Do we believe Jesus is this doctor? I was going to say the band's going to come up, including me. Jesus is like a doctor who will heal and help anyone who will come to him. So will you come to him? Will you come to him in prayer? Will you come to him in any way you can? Will you come to him with your needs? And will you help others to come to Jesus? What will you do to help the community around you? Come to Dr. Jesus to experience his kingdom, his forgiveness, his healing. Let's stand together. We're going to worship and come to Jesus now.